All right, guys, so we're out here in the garage in the car trying to see if I can come up with a solution to solve a little problem that we've had pretty much all season long. Uh, this car used to go A to B on any track all the time, no issues, didn't matter what we did unless we were like really going after a record or something, maybe we'd spin. But this year has been a little bit of a different story. I changed a few things, you know, the weights moved around a little bit. We've got a different turbo on the car, um, which, you know, according to Holly, we're making some more power. So about 50 50 we spin and i made a post on social media a few weeks ago asking about starting line ratios and this car has a stock 400 first gear uh 248 and a 355 rear gear now that combination works good for going out the back we cross the finish line you know where where i want to be i'm happy with that <clears throat> but the starting line ratio you know you multiply those two together and we get a really aggressive number I think somewhere in the eights offhand. So the only thing we can do is change our first gear or change our rear gear. Now the rear gear, I could do that pretty quickly. Um, inexpensive, it's not too bad. Uh, changing the transmission first gear, that costs quite a bit more, takes a lot more time. And we've got a couple races coming up where I just that's just not gonna be possible. So our, our better option is don't leave on so much RPM. You know, we're leaving on 4,000 RPM, 4,100 RPM, you know, 12, 13, 14 pounds of boost. And that's just hitting the heart. That's just hitting the tire hard, hitting the tire, hitting the suspension, everything. So my solution to this is, and what we're going to try to do today is see if we can get this car to make more boost on lower RPM. Now I did try that during qualifying a few weeks ago at an event. We dropped it down hundred RPM. I think it was 3,900 and tried to make 12, 13 pounds. It got there, but it took an extremely long amount of time. Uh, I actually got a clip of that, so check this out. All right, so you guys can see, you know, normally this thing will spool, I don't know, three, four seconds. It doesn't take very long. It's not bad at all. Never had a problem with it, but just dropping at 100 RPM made a big difference and we didn't change anything else in the tune so i've got a couple tunes made up here that we're going to attempt see if we can get them to work end goal 3800 rpm 16 pounds of boost or more if we can make it work play a little bit with um timing fuel and rpm offsets so i'm going to go ahead and start this we'll get it warmed up and load that tune and we'll see if we can make it work i'll show you guys all the adjustments that we make along the way all right, so on this first attempt, we've got the car all warmed up. It's good to go there. I've got the ECU connected, got my tune set up. And just to give you guys kind of an idea of what we've changed. So we've got 16 on the brake. Um, and then I made some offset tables. You can see here where we've done some boost builders. So we're adding some timing, then pulling timing. We've got the three step set up so what that means is my two-step is 3800 rpm but until it gets to what are we at here until it gets to like nine pounds boost it's actually going to add 600 so we're going to be able to go to 4400 if it can get there obviously the converter plays a role in this as well haven't messed too much with the fueling yet i want to see where this gets us and then go from there so let's go ahead and get the car back on we'll get this loaded and let's see how long it takes to make 16 pounds of boost or if it will make 16 pounds of boost but fingers crossed it does definitely made boost actually 
Wasn't bad. Let me try <laughs> I'm actually surprised with how well that worked. So it took five seconds. Not terrible. I mean, you get seven. I'd like to see it a little quicker than that. Um, I mean, RPM didn't fall off or anything. It, it actually did pretty good. But yeah, I mean, it'll definitely make it'll definitely make the boost. Yeah, let me do some slight slight tweaking, and we'll try it again. Okay, so the changes that I made, um, it looked like it really liked pulling the timing, which was kind of late. So I brought it, brought it in. So essentially, at, at a lower boost, we're pulling more timing quicker. I didn't change the offset. We're going to leave that for now, and then actually added a little bit of fuel, like a two percent, uh, once it's in boost across to see what kind of changes that makes. So let's start it up and see. So it seemed like it came up faster, but uh, it didn't make more boost. So it looks like we've got to play with that a little bit. So I'm just looking at the tunes now, trying to see. Yeah, see, this one just got to. It got to like 13 pounds and just held it there. Surprisingly enough, it looks like the other one was a bit better. More rich there. So maybe we need to lean it back out. Tick. Interesting, it didn't really seem to respond to the fuel add. So we might take that back out. Get rid of that. I'm really shocked pulling the timing didn't help. I thought it would. Maybe it was too much. Yeah, it liked everything more about the first one. Interesting. This is why you do these tests. It really is acting like as soon as I brought the, the three-step down, that's where it stopped making boost. So I'm wondering if we need to run the three-step further out boost-wise, and then once it comes back down, the turbo's lit and it's ready to roll and it's still going. So maybe we go back to the first one, tweak the timing a little bit, but then run the three-step out further. That, that might be the answer. Okay, so unfortunately I forgot to turn on the camera next to me in the car, but um, here's attempt number three. And what we did was changed a few things. So we went ahead and messed with the timing a bit more and then also extended that three step out a bit further in hopes that, you know, it'll stay at that higher RPM, keep making that boost. And then once it hits that certain threshold we've set up, you know, that 15, 16 pounds, it'll drop back down to that 3,800 RPM. Because again, the idea is we're trying to make more boost at less RPM. So we use that offset to kind of help get us there and then bring it back down to hold it. So let's go ahead and try number three, see if this works. And then if there's any final tweaking, we'll probably do it at the track tomorrow. Okay. Tunes loaded, started. <laughs> So this obviously worked out a lot better than our second test. 
by going back to the first one and making some changes. So here in the picture, you can see uh, the green line is where I hit throttle, and it takes about four seconds to get to 15 pounds of boost uh, right there in the middle of the screen. So definitely worked. We were hoping for a little bit more. So we're going to make a couple small changes and then meet you guys at the track, test this in person on track. All right, we made it up to Muncie here on uh, the next day, and we've got what I was telling you about, the test number four, if you will, set up to put into the car. What we did was um, I ended up putting a little bit more um, dome pressure on it just to get us a little bit closer to that 16 pounds. And then also what we did is on our um, offset tables, we didn't pull timing out a little sooner because it seems like it's okay. The issue is if you pull too much timing too early, you're going to run into an issue where it falls back off and you don't have any space. Okay. So went ahead and ran it. And then um, the second thing that we did was just pull the three step back a little further. Um, that way it doesn't uh, never get to where we need it to. And um, so we're going to load this tune, put some tires, some air in the tires. God, I can't talk today. Put some air in the tires and uh, go make a pass. So we just made a second pass. Um, car went, let me grab the slip. So it went an 8468 with a 125 960 foot. And um, we kind of use a rating scale for the track prep. And this one's going to be on the lower end. So the fact that it went, you know, a 125 on lower prep and went out the back door, happy, good to go. I think we've got it figured out. Car left on, you know, 15 pounds of boost at like 2850 RPM. Seemed like it was happy, good to go. Uh, looking at the log, one thing we're going to do is it kind of waved a little bit on the uh, three step. I, I think because we pulled timing a little too aggressive, we're going to put a little bit back in there. But um, all in all, I mean, in two hits, I think we've, we've got the car definitely similar back to what it used to do. Really happy. So I'll show you guys the log a little bit closer in detail. We'll go over that. And then uh, we're going to make a couple changes to go make another hit and we'll compare it to this one. All right, so we're back home, and uh, the reason being we didn't get any video at the track is a crazy little pop-up shower came out of nowhere and really ended testing for us that day. That's okay. We were able to get three passes in and test out what we were trying to do. So let's recap. Starting line ratio. Stock 400 gear, 355 rear, puts us, if you saw earlier in the video, I think like an 8.8 .8 or something in that range, which most consider too aggressive for what we're trying to do on our car. So the idea was, lower that rpm that we're launching at going from 41 4100 4000 down to 3800 or so and making more boost so we'd been leaving on you know 11 12 13 pounds now we're trying to leave on 14 15 maybe 16 you know if the track is there as you saw in that third pass unfortunately it did spin but it didn't spin on the hit it spun further out you know maybe it was uh, i don't know 40 50 feet out i'm not exactly sure but we weren't we weren't spinning on that initial hit uh, the reason I think we spun further out is we were probably three or four hours into this event and it was pretty much just open testing. So a lot of hard tire cars, street tire cars, um, you know, they don't really help with the track surface uh, like a radial or slick does. And there wasn't really an additional prep from just the initial spray, which is fine. We wanted to go to a track where in a, a situation where we knew the prep wasn't going to be um, as good as maybe we might see during an event where we're going rounds and they're constantly re-prepping. Um, so not too concerned about that. What we did see was a car that left the starting line and was happy, especially in those first two runs. The third one, we got a bit aggressive on the boost ramp afterwards. Looking at the data log on that last pass, uh, we were able to make at 3,800 RPM, uh, 15 pounds of boost in 3.59 seconds. So very happy with that. I think I could probably adjust it a little bit more, but hey, under four seconds, 15 pounds, 3,800, no problem at all. So 
hopefully this helps you guys out. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to type them down in the comments below and I'll, I'll answer them for sure. Help you out with that. Go back and look to kind of see. Now, I, I do want to state that the numbers and everything I used worked in my combo. You're going to have to play around with yours. You know, this could take multiple attempts to get it right. Um, luckily for me, I've, I've got a lot of history with the car and I kind of know what worked, what didn't work. I did play around with the fueling in my instance. It didn't seem to like the extra fuel, but maybe taking it out, leaning it. I'm not exactly sure, but I got it where I want it. So I'm happy with it. Um, I'm going to end this by showing you guys another clip where we actually lowered the RPM even more and boost on a really good track at LS Fest and we went pretty fast. So thanks for watching guys. Check out this final clip. See how quick we were able to go and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.